You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. This is BRFM 95.6, the Harless Sheppy's very own community radio station. You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with me, Daniel. And now it's time to the second part of the interviews and interview. I was uh, doing when I was out and about at Gillingham Pier speaking to the people at the Medway Queen Preservation Society and I got the opportunity to be taken on board the Medway Queen and shown round by Brian Goodchew and uh, this is what happened. So we're now outside on the uh, quayside with uh, Brian so I think you're going to uh, talk a little bit about the um, Medway Queen out here now. Yes, as we have said, we're now looking at her looking all splendid and uh, what we've done for the last five years is purely we've had a new hull and uh, there she is looking brilliant uh, high tide at the moment and she's looking very tall the one in front is our light ship which is uh, uh, one of our friends and we will have in future open days where you can come down look at the uh, visitor centre go on the ship and even go on the light ship and people can even go up into the lamp room so the whole area is geared towards um, well maritime history we're uh, now on board uh, the Medway Queen it's certainly fantastic to have my first look inside but I was hoping you could explain to our listeners a bit more as we I think we're gonna go around on a tour we are we are you are one of the very first people to uh, be actually shown around the the main thing is the lower decks um, are improving but it's pure steel work obviously we've got decks but uh, I'll start painting the picture and of course most of our most of our uh, assets is a wartime history now we've just come on board by the paddle wheels and of course in Dunkirk this is where those starvenous ravenous creatures you would pour on board being rescued from the sands of, of Dunkirk and uh, they would scramble on they would have walked for miles and uh, not eaten for days over here we've got an area in front of the gully which they laid out all the wounded um, exhausted people and of course they were in a pretty poor state and there are several people in this area who are laid there and of course they're heading towards Dover and I think there was three of them at different times was asked to be looked, uh, helped up, look out the windows and of course what they wanted to see was the White Cliffs of Dover because they knew they was nearly home and unfortunately after that they died. And of course there was all these people laying about, there was no medical officer on board it might have been, uh, hopefully, someone would bring them, uh, a medical officer with them on board, but it was purely just looking after them and trying to make them comfortable. Here we've got the gully, um, just an empty space at the moment, but these ravenous creatures would line up and uh, for food. Mr Russell, the cook, would have had cauldrons and cauldrons of cocoa all steaming on board on the uh, galley stove and they would be handed a mug of hot cocoa and well what they used to call a wad and that was a piece of bread with a uh, piece of butter on it or something but they hadn't eaten for days so therefore they would just eat it and uh, drunk the cocoa and then they all went to different places of the ship and most of them, and if you interview them, uh, they don't remember anything of the trip coming back because they found somewhere and fell asleep. I was just going to say, it's a very small space in there. This so, galley, well, yeah. I, myself, I was a crew member in 1953 and uh, uh, it was hot, to say the least. There was a black coal burning stove in the corner, uh, different um, red hot, what they call press, to keep the food warm and there was no ventilation apart from the skylight and the two doors open and to tell you the truth it was hot just moving on there we've got a 
we're looking at a, a rather a big space in the, in the middle of the ship, which is the boiler room. Now, we haven't got a boiler. We do need a boiler, uh, but a boiler in price costs many, many thousands of pounds. So <clears throat> anybody out there, truly grateful. While I'm on the subject, you, you can donate by PayPal, which has uh, been a good asset recently. I was just going to say, it's a, a massive um, void. Uh, how would you get it, get the boiler in here? Well, the boiler would have to come through the roof or the top deck, which is under the funnel. And, of course, we would have to just lift the funnel out of the way and uh, lower the boiler in. On the right... OK, as we're going through on the right, this space is oh, purely the passengers' toilets. Uh, ladies, and then the toilets on the right were the... With the mess with the uh, cruise tank. And I assume that curve is the curve where the actual paddle is on the outside, is that yeah, right? Yeah, that's it. This is the other one. And if you look through here, you'll see the paddle wheel. <coughs> and when the ship, when the ship comes at the end of the day, uh, at Sun Pier, while they was um, disembarking the uh, passengers, you'd get an engineer crawling in there and tap, tapping the wheel to make sure she was still sound. So that was quite a scary job. Yeah, so I wonder what that hatch was for. So the wheel at the moment is just purely metal. Does right. uh, do, do wooden paddles have to go on that? No, no, there's not wooden paddles, it's metal paddles. <coughs> that was um, that was made, they are brand new, they were made at Bristol for us. So they are as they will be when they're running? Yes, oh. that's right. We've got to get in there, do a bit of uh, scraping and painting and... Uh, bring her up to date. Well now we're looking at the engines. Okay, engines, many of the parts were, had been underwater for many, many years, uh, but the, many parts of these engines are original. Uh, we're grateful for the fact that uh, we put out, like we've mentioned several times in these interviews, we do need volunteers, and the volunteers come forward. We have actually three uh, chief engineer steam, steam engineers, so that is one of our top priorities is to get the engines uh, up, cleaned and uh, in a better condition. Many parts are missing, many parts were taken off her on the Isle of Wight and uh, well this is part of modern living but it will happen but it's going to take two or three years to do. Okay. Here we are at the Alf Saloon, Alf Saloon which is it was advertised in the posters as when you looked at the paddle steamer it was advertised as a luxury saloon paddle steamer and this is where you would have had uh, a meal um, you would have come down the river in the morning with a morning coffee a midday meal an afternoon tea or some tea when you come up the uh, an evening lunch, uh, meal when you come up the river in the evening and this is one of our top priorities to get this going and uh, which will be well, one of the first priorities really and perhaps we might even like to come and get married on board or take a meal but once again it's going to take a couple of years. Well, it's quite an amazing uh, space and bigger than you'd uh, initially imagine I think. At this end where we're standing um, yes there was a little room over here which was a nice cream uh, shop and the space on the left was the ladies toilets but uh, we shall find other uses for those. So we're just looking down into the, the bottom of the boat. Is that a part that will be used or is that more for maintenance? Lower part of the ship, lower saloon aft um, in its time was all cushions and fancy um, uh, chairs. And on the Isle of Wight, it was actually a disco area. And uh, if when she was in service uh, of a local firm, um, like, like a factory used to treat their employees to a special day out on the Midway Queen involved was also a meal on the way up and that's where they all used to go down and there used to be tables full of plated salads and bits and pieces and it finished the day off for them so it will be used in fact down below there will be the new galley because um, uh, we need modern ways of cooking like microwaves which you don't really want on show so what would the old uh, galley be used for then in, in at the moment the old galley will be purely dressed as it used to look like and uh, well like we've done now we just point out its use but 
it's too far up the other end of the ship at the moment because, you know, it would have to be carried from one end of the ship to the other. So we are here at the Monday Night Community Show, continuing to hear the interview I did with Brian Goodyear on board the Medway Queen as he's showing us round. Well, we've got another part here. I mean, there was loads of toilets on board the ship, and this is one of them as we're going round the lower decks. And, of course, what brings back memory, on the wall here used to be a notice saying, um, uh, wash and brush up threepence. So you, for that, you've got a piece of soap and a towel, and you paid the steward threepence to uh, have a wash and brush up. So um, you've just been showing us where the, um, the washrooms and toilets were. We're now on the opposite side of the, uh, the paddle wheel from, from there. So uh, what's, what's this part for? This part used to be the chief engineer's, ca- chief engineer's cabin, which, as you can see, he could come straight out the door and he would be in the engine room within seconds. And the other door next to it used to be the chief steward's office where we do all his paperwork and uh, ordering, well, the beers and whatever you want to call it for the, for the rest of the trips. It's quite amazing because from outside I didn't realise there would actually be space um, almost in the void next to the paddle wheel. It's uh, a bit you don't really think of. I, I assume it was all to do with the, the paddle wheel itself. It's all been made use of. That, this is the whole point. Every, every part of the ship is made use of. And uh, what we would invite people to do, give us a couple of months and we will get it into ship shape, as you might say. And uh, we will have the guided tour, which is the same as you've just had. So just before we go up onto the uh, upper deck, we've now gone back to the, um, the front half of the, um, the ship. And there's uh, another stairwell going down onto the, uh, to the bottom of the boat. So what, what was this part used for, Brian? This was used as an overflow tea bar when she was on, in, on the journeys. We used to get local firms treat their employees to um, a day out. And uh, when you've got several hundred people extra on a trip, you needed these, uh, this room as an extra tea bar. So like an overflow space. That's right, that's right. And also under the stairs, there was co- cabinets and cupboards, which um, we used to store the linen. And uh, um, as I said, every space was made, made use of. So looking towards the uh, front of the boat, we've got some, uh, some portholes uh, here. And I understand that um, this is an area we kind of covered uh, in an earlier interview. That's right. This was the Acorn um, Bar. And uh, with, with the, the, uh, the barman and drinks. And of course the bar never closed all day because we was at sea. And licensing hours didn't, um, didn't apply. So we did have one occasion where people would come on in the morning and they're still in the bar at, well, we got home at uh, 7 o'clock at night. Um, some steps in front of us. Underneath the bar is the, fru- the uh, cruise accommodation and behind the bar is the chain locker and uh, where the... Uh, well, the anchor and things were stored. So we're now up on the uh, deck of the Medway Queen. I must say, it's uh, quite a big space up here, especially by the uh, paddle wheels. It's brilliant. I mean, all this deck you're standing on is brand new. This was all put on in Bristol uh, by the apprentices and carpenters. And, of course, as you said, with the space of it, uh, this is a promenade deck. In 1924, when she was obviously first built, um, it was called a promenade deck because the ladies wore their best dresses and promenaded uh, or walked about showing themselves off and that's why she's got a flush deck which is a level deck right from the stem to the stern a nice open deck where well it still goes on down today doesn't it the, the, the funnel is actually on the boat was that there when it come back from bristol have you put that on uh, since it's arrived here we've we've put that on um she was on show in the dockyard for a while. As you can see, she's got to be scraped and painted. We've already got the paint ready for that, so when people come down, she should see it newly painted. In front of that, the um, apprentices and the volunteers are making the captain's cabin. And over the top of the captain's cabin will be the bridge. Captain never, Captain never left the uh, the bridge. He might go down to his cabin to check the charts, but uh, that's coming to life. 
people you spoke to already that's their pet project in front of the captain's cabin there will be uh, the mast the mast is being built by our French partners uh, as I mentioned earlier on so it's all coming to sh into ship shape as you might say we do invite people down on a Saturday to the visitor centre um, give us a couple of months and uh, we'll invite you down for guided tours probably on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday but um, what, just watch out for the news So the captain's cabin, is that uh, an original piece or does that have to be completely rebuilt um, from fresh? No, that's been built from fresh but to original plans, original wood and uh, of course, when she was at, uh, in the in the Medway being flooded, most of this woodwork was, um, well, just uh, went to pieces. And lost. Yep. So, it's all steps forward. We'd like people to come down now and again and see what we've done and uh, think, well, we are getting there. It's going to take two or three years. We are down here, we've rented this premises until 2018 and hopefully it won't take that long and part of the agreement is that we will take her to sea we will go to south end but you don't go to south end for eight and six anymore and uh, it probably when it goes to south end it will be an occasion rather than a, a weekly uh, trip so i was just wondering um to round things up brian if you could just let our listeners know how they can contact you yes certainly good old landline uh, Medway 01634 57 57 17 but Monday to, to Thursday only we have a website good old three w's dot queen dot co dot uk and if you want to donate we can be donated money on PayPal thanks for anybody who's interested Thanks. and uh, well hope to see you down there well, Brian, I'd like to thank you very much for spending the time with us uh, to give me a chance to look all around your facilities and uh, the Medway Queen as well. It's really been uh, a great um, morning for me. Thank you, Daniel, and uh, thank you for all these people on BR Radio. Um, it, they've shown a lot of interest over the years and hope to see you down here.